we will try and understand the components of environment what uh, what are the all the components that are constituting environment so basically good morning students welcome back to plutus is so we have successfully completed the polity topic and in polity we have seen 16 topics so the i have uh, tried and uh, incorporated uh, the most important topics i thought for the purpose purpose of the examination so from today onwards we will see the environment and ecology environment and ecology you all uh, as you all know there are many number of questions are being asked from the environment and ecology also so the number of proportion of questions has been increased uh, since when the UPSC prelims uh, for civil services and forest services has been merged and single exam was uh, incorporated for both the exams. So since then, uh, the number of questions that are being asked from the environment and ecology that has been increased substantially. Similarly, one more advantage, advantage is there. That is, uh, you can invest very less time in environment and uh, there is a uh, possibility of scoring more marks. So you can invest less time because basically the topics are very, very less. Topics are uh, simple uh, and uh, the scoring scoring rate is very high. Right? You, if you have substantial knowledge, knowledge that is required, you can score more marks through this subject also. So when it comes to uh, prelims examination, so we can say the environment and ecology, this subject becomes the deciding factor. So the student who performs well in this area, the environment and the ecology area, so there is uh, much possibility of uh, that particular uh, aspirant clearing the prelims examination. So this is small uh, information about the subject, environment and ecology. <coughs> in today's lecture, we will understand the uh, basic concepts, uh, what what environment and ecology constitutes and uh, we will try to see some definitions and uh, some important concepts. So there is a, I mean, greater chance of uh, these aspects coming in the examination. So basically I will be focusing on the areas uh, in which uh, they, these, those areas have been asked previously or there is a possibility of question being asked from that area. Right. Now we will try to understand the first, we will try to understand the aspect of meaning of environment. So basically, <coughs> it came from a French word, environnement, which means surroundings. So basically, it came, the word environment came from, for, from the French word, environment, right, which means surroundings. So basically, environment consists of living and non-living elements. This is, uh, you know, you all very well know. So basically, environment consists of both living and non-living uh, entities or elements. So basically the definition could be like this. The sum of all external conditions affecting the life, development and survival of an organism. So basically this can be seen as the, this can be considered as a proper definition for the environment. So basically we will see the components of the environment, what constitutes the environment. So first aspect is physical environment or physical factors. Physical factors are like many things, like <coughs> it refers to non-living aspects, physical conditions like uh, air, water, soil, climate, heat, light, noise, housing, radiations, etc. So all these are physical conditions or physical environment. Basically, the physical environment is non-living environment. Similarly, there is a biological environment. We can consider it as living environment. So similarly here, biological factors like uh, biological environment which includes trees, animals, insects, etc. <coughs> so it encompasses all types of flora, fauna and uh, microorganisms. So this is biological environment. So in the end, there is a human environment in which all, as humans are a major and basic component. So human environment, so basically here, Social conditions like customs, religion, habits, and occupations play a pivotal, pivotal role in the human environment. So all these factors, these factors significantly influence the 
living conditions demonstrating the interconnectedness of human societies with their surroundings so basically environment is the organisms interacting with the their surroundings so basically this is known as environment so the uh, the <coughs> components of environment we can uh, study under three components that is physical environment biological environment and human environment right similarly we try to see the classification of environment how environment can be classified so basically we can see two types of uh, environments but is uh, that is physical or natural natural environment so this environment is a product of nature so nature is creating this environment so it is basically generally unaffected, unaffected by the direct or indirect human activity so basically this is the general uh, natural uh, this environment is naturally created by the nature due to the actions of the nature generally these are not affected or disturbed by the human beings but uh, over the time <coughs> see some of the elements such as rocks minerals temperature humidity wind rain and other non living components come under this aspect but you, as you can see over the time due to increasing human interventions increasing human uh, interventions in the nature in the nature so all these aspects even physical environment is being disturbed or changed so we will understand when we study the uh, greenhouse gases ghgs and the climate change and the loss of biodiversity loss of biodiversity so all these aspects are happening because increasing interference of human beings in the physical or natural environment so in the later topics we will try and understand those aspects second uh, uh, type of environment is cultural or social environment so basically this is a creator uh, created by the human beings human beings created this one so uh, basically the components are man made aspects including railways population density cultural backgrounds technological levels and various socio economic factors constitute the cultural environment so the, this environment reflects the inter intricate web of human activities and their impact on the surrounding so this is cultural or social environment and this is physical or natural environment so try to uh, this is one kind of class, uh, classification uh, there may there is a chance of coming a question about the what are the kinds of environment so basically that type of question may come in the examination so the uh, this is so basically the classification of environment next is we will try and understand the components of environment what uh, what are the all the components that are constituting environment so basically <coughs> four broad components we can see those are lithosphere hydrosphere atmosphere biosphere so lithosphere this is the upper layer of the earth basically we call it as crust upper part of the crust is basically known as the lithosphere hydrosphere you know all the water all the water bodies including oceans seas rivers lakes etc all all these uh, uh, constitute the hydrosphere in the environment similarly atmosphere so from the uh, surface of the earth till the i mean the in the space till uh, until where, where the air exists so that portion is called as atmosphere so here we have gases plus water vapor is also there similarly we also have dust particles so this constitutes the atmosphere so bio biosphere where the living organisms live so basically if this is the earth this is the atmosphere so the thin layer just above the uh, surface earth surface this part constitutes the biosphere right this is biosphere we can say this is uh, lithosphere right so and uh, this is biosphere we can say this is atmosphere 
and we can say there is one more thing hydrosphere so whatever the water bodies that are there in uh, on the earth surface that is basically called as hydrosphere so basically we represent the hydrosphere with the blue color <coughs> so basically these are the components of the uh, <coughs> environment now we will briefly see what constitutes what each this component constitutes right first one is lithosphere so it forms the foundation upon which life exists so basically lithosphere basic for or existence formation or creation and existence of life so it hosts a myriad of geological fe features such as mountains plains and valleys so understanding the lithos lithosphere is very very important for understanding the uh, human beings or we can say the biosphere so understanding the lithosphere also becomes important for understanding the biosphere so it is basically the earth's solid outer layer we can say the upper part of the crust of crust right next one is important co uh, component another important component that is hydrosphere so it encompasses all the water bodies on the earth so it, inclu it includes oceans rivers lakes and groundwater also included in the hydrosphere so water it is a vital source for living organisms and it it plays a fundamental role in shaping the landscape and the surrounding life the third one is atmosphere so the atmosphere is envelope of gases surrounding the earth right <coughs> so it it is divided into further divided into layers such as troposphere stratosphere mesosphere and thermosphere and exosphere so basically when we see geography when we study the geography we will understand all these layers uh, we will go into some detail and we will study about the uh, details about each of this layer for environment aspects you just try to remember that there are certain layers within the atmosphere that is sufficient all right all right so it's uh, it regulates the temperature basically the layers regulate the temperature supports life and influences weather patterns so lastly the important and most significant component is biosphere on the earth so biosphere is the realm where life exists encompassing all living organisms and their interactions with the environment so it inc includes diverse ecosystems so basically biosphere includes ecosystems right the ec ecosystems ranging from forest forest to desert so, so forest will be there deserts will be there oceans will be there marshy lands will be there so many type of type of ecosystems will be there grasslands will be there so it is there are many types of ecosystems and they support rich biodiversity so these are the components of the atmosphere <coughs> next one is now we will try, try to understand the key terms so try to remember these key terms actually they have been asked repeatedly in the examination so basically there may be a question about matching these words can be given at one side and their respective de uh, de uh, definitions can be given in the other side so the examiner may ask to match the uh, word and the definition similarly there may be a question on this hierarchy basically these components also constitute the <coughs> hierarchy ecological hierarchy so there may be a question on the this hierarchy aspects also so hierarchy means first i will introduce the words then we will see the uh, definition and the hierarchy also species so basically the primary component in in an ecosystem is species right so a species is defined as group of organisms that are capable of interbreeding interbreeding and producing fertile of spring under natural conditions so species is basically defined a defined as uh, the organism or group of organisms that have the capacity of interbreeding so they should be having the capacity of interbreeding and produce fertile offspring so this is also second condition they should not only uh, interbreed but they should also produce a fertile uh, offspring fertile offspring means the offspring also 
should be should have the capability of again interbreeding with the same species and producing a fertile offspring right so basically that is uh, called as species so basically humans are a species similarly dogs are a species again there are several subspecies under dogs but they all have the capability of interbreeding and pro producing offspring so basically all dogs come under uh, one single species similarly deer are there similarly lions are there so all these are individual species so basically we the famous example about the, uh, the species is basically horses are there and donkeys are there so basically uh, these horses and donkeys can uh, 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 they can interbreed i mean they can produce an offspring so that uh, particular offspring which uh, whatever comes from the interbreeding of these two uh, species it, it is non fertile fertile so basically we have the example of mule and henny mule and the henny is there basically these two species have come because of the interbreeding of horses and donkeys so first condition uh, to call them as same species first condition is being fulfilled they are interbreeding but they are unable to produce a uh, fertile offspring so because of that reason the horses and uh, donkeys cannot constitute a single species so because of this reason they constitute different species so try to remember this these kinds of example so basically horses and donkeys have the cap capacity of interbreeding but they cannot produce a fertile offspring so because of this reason they belong to different species right <coughs> right so this is all about the species so basic, basically <coughs> uh, the population next important term is population so population can be defined as a group of interbreeding organisms coexisting in a specific area such as population of zebras in a forest so when <coughs> species organisms belonging to a single species we can say group of species when group of species live in a particular area for example zebras for example lions for example tigers when they live in a particular area they are known as the population so uh, organism billing uh, number of organisms group of organisms uh, belonging to a same species if they live together that is known as population right so group of species is population so try to remember this hierarchy also right so this is about population next is community or biotic community so it encompasses all living organisms including plants animals and micro organisms interacting uh, in a given area so when groups of populations live to the live together <coughs> or they are living in a particular area those are called as communities so after population when a group of populations live together or live in a area the community biotic community is <coughs> formed so basically a group of populations is called as biotic community next is so if this is the species uh, the suppose another this this is this is the species these uh, i mean this is another species this is another species so this becomes the community so when our different communities are there different communities are there this becomes the sorry this becomes the population this becomes the population so whenever different populations are living to together this becomes the community when different communities are living together that leads to formation of ecosystem so this becomes the ecosystem so try to remember this hierarchy also so ecosystem is so it is a complex interplay between organisms and their physical environment regulating itself through abiotic factors so basically ecosystem is defined as so it is the interplay or interaction between the organisms and its surrounding physical environment so after the communities the ecosystem will come so ecosystem is basically 
the interaction of the interaction of basically the interaction of communities plus physical environment right so this is called as ecosystem next one is the landscape so landscape is a group of ecosystems and a human art artifacts categorized as fabricated domesticated and a natural landscape so basically it is a landscape is a group of ecosystem so over this area will come the landscape so over this area come after ecosystem when a group of ecosystems are there they are called as the landscape so further landscapes are divided into further divided into human artifacts uh, sorry uh, they are classified into fabricated landscapes domesticated landscapes and natural landscape so try to remember this classification also next is the final hierarchy that is biomes so <coughs> so basically whenever the number of landscapes are there so basically all those landscapes are called and they together form a biome so after the landscapes will come the biome so example is we can call earth as a biome because it has several landscapes like oceans deserts grasslands etc so basically all these are uh, ecosystems we can call each continent as a <coughs> landscape so basically so earth is a big biome earth is example of biome right right so understanding biome requires knowledge related terms such as succession species succession is uh, the one species after another species it is coming similarly climax species climax so to understand the biome we should also be understanding these type of terminology in the later uh, i mean within this lecture in later part we will see the uh, succession species succession and the climax Cl and we will also see the climax species so basically this is key, this is about the key terminology when it comes to <coughs> ecology or uh, biosphere hierarchy and we also have seen the hierarchy of the uh, these <coughs> uh, components or these aspects right right we will now understand the structure and the function of the ecosystems right right now we will see the structure and the functioning of the ecosystem till now we have seen some basic aspects about the ecosystem now we will the understand the structure and the functions of the ecosystem so basically ecosystem can be divided into two fundamental categories earlier also we have seen two categories uh, that is the physical uh, environment and uh, social or cultural environment here another type of categorization is terrestrial and aquatic ecosystem so terrestrial is basically the surface landscape is <coughs> earth or land terrain here the aquatic ecosystem is the ecosystem with water basically the oceans and the seas are considered as the aquatic ecosystem so basically the continents i mean the where earth is the, at the surface level top level that is known as terrestrial level so the examples are so the terrestrial uh, examples for uh, terrestrial ecosystem are forests grasslands deserts so <coughs> so they thrive on land these are terrestrial ecosystem so aquatic ecosystems are like ponds lakes wetlands rivers and estuaries basically the oceans and uh, seas these are also considered as the uh, sorry aquatic ecosystems right so this is the one of the uh, one more classification of the environment so we will now understand the functions or functioning the functioning of the ecosystem how the ecosystem functions so to understand the func functioning of the ecosystem we should understand four aspects about the environment so that is productivity productivity of the environment so it is uh, the rate of biomass production and the flow of energy within the ecosystem so this is the uh, one of the important aspects about the environment so one major and primary component of the the ecosystem is productivity right so how much biomass is being produced and it also tries to explain the 
flow of energy next important aspect is decomposition so it is a decomposition is breakdown of organic matter into simpler substances it is also vital for ecological process so basically dead material will be there so like plants will die animals will die so once they die the bodies of these uh, whether it is plants or animals it has to be decomposed it has to be uh, divided into smaller part so that is explained by decomposition third one is energy flow so <coughs> so it is uh, examining the unidirectional flow of energy through tropic levels so we will understand what is tropic level in the later part of the lecture so it is basically the energy flows in one direction that that is the source of uh, energy is sun so all the energy for the requirement for the earth is coming from the sun so there is a unidirectional flow of energy towards the earth so basically the third aspect flow of energy try uh, i mean helps us understand the unidirectional flow of energy right uh, the last one is fourth component is uh, nutrient cycling uh, nutrient uh, cycling so it is essential we, uh, it helps understand how essential nutrients within the ecosystem uh, how they are being recycled so recycled so the nutrient cycles, uh, cycles help us understand this aspect in lower classes when you are uh, in the schools you might have studied the carbon cycle right nitrogen cycle is there similarly phosphorus cycle is there so these uh, type of cycles explain the explain the nutrient cycling so in the later part of the lecture we will also see about those cycles first one is productivity so it is a fundamental requirement for any ecosystems functioning and uh, sustenance is continuous sustenance is continuous supply of solar energy so basically productivity entire productivity of the earth is dependent on the energy supplied by the sun right so it is uh, the sunlight is source for photosynthesis so all the energy is coming from uh, photosynthesis so basically the plants are at the uh, helm of doing this photosynthesis so plants will do this photosynthesis and basically because of this reason they are called as the producers or primary producers right green green leafy plants they are the source of the energy right so basically <coughs> this energy can be measured in two aspects gross primary productivity so this is the total rate of organic matter production during the photos photosynthesis however a portion of gpp grass uh, primary production it is consumed by the plants in respiration so the plants also require energy so we human beings or for that matter all the animals dependent dependent on respiratory process for getting the energy uh, to break down break down whatever uh, the food we have taken so that is involved uh, that is i mean energy we get our energy through respiratory process so for plants also some uh, some energy is being uh, spent on respiratory process so big, uh, the, when that that happens the concept of net primary product production will come so it is the actual biomass available for consumption by heterotrophs uh, which includes herbivores and decomposers so mathematically it is represented it is the difference between gpp and the loss due to uh, respiration right we have studied that the plants also need some energy and they get their energy through respiration so in that process in respiration process some of the energy that is created will be utilized by the plant so after that the energy available that is called as net primary productivity right the formula is gpp minus energy lost in respiration so that will give us the net primary productivity similarly there is a secondary productivity it refers to the rate at which consumers form new organic matter that is secondary produ productivity right <coughs> so this is all about primary productivity and primary and secondary productivity right now we will understand the second aspect 
decomposition so this is also very very important aspects try to remember the points here also right so basically we will try to understand this with an example so earthworm often dubbed as the friend of the farmers from a uh, farmer's friend it is also naturally known as the natural plow natural right because it <coughs> it is where it plays an important role in the decomposition of the organic material so it plays a, key, a crucial role in breaking down complex organic matter and loosening the soil so this is one of the important examples in decomposition so decomposers like earthworms they contribute to contribute to this process what process the breaking down of complex organic matter right by breaking down complex organic matter into inorganic substances like carbon dioxide water and nutrients a phenomenon known as decomposition so basically when complex organisms are uh, decomposed into <coughs> single substances or inorganic components like or carbon dioxide water etc but the nutrients are there <coughs> sulfur iron phosphorus so when these kinds of inorganic compounds are formed it is known as decomposition so for decomposition detritus or dead organic material dead organic material it acts as the raw material so for uh, decomposers decomposers the detritus or dead or organic material uh, they the decomposers feed on this organic ma matter dead organic matter and they form the simple compound simple elements substances like nitrogen oxygen carbon dioxide etc <clears throat> so basically what constitutes the detritus dead plant remains including leaves bark flowers and animal debris such as fecal matter these constitute the raw material for decomposition now we will understand the key steps important steps in the decomposition right first one is fragmentation <clears throat> so they initiate the breakdown of detritus into small particles that is it is known as fragmentation next one is leaching so once fragments are formed so the water soluble in in inorganic nutrients leach down into the soil horizon so it uh, i mean precipitating uh, as unavailable salt so this process is known as leaching third one is catabolism so bacterial and fungal enzymes degrade detritus into simpler inorganic substances in a process known as catabolism so these are the steps involved in the decomposition process so basically through this uh, picture you can understand the decomposition uh, so it really falls on the soil <coughs> right <coughs> some are eaten by the insects and other animals nutrients and energy enter the food web so some nutrients after that some nutrients uh, leach into soil by chemical action so that will enter into organic soil and the soil becomes rich so apart from this leaves partially consumed by decomposers such as fungi and bacteria they begin to lose lose form and become litter so they also further decomposition by earthworms and bacteria so, um, so soil mites so etc and it also basically enters into the organic soil further the all these nutrients or uh, simple compounds again will be absorbed uh, by trees or grass etc and uh, again they enter into the food web so this is basically the uh, decomposition process now we will understand the energy flow within the ecosystem so the sun apart from so basically there is a deep sea hydrothermal system that is uh, providing some sort of energy for uh, the benthic animals who are who live uh, beneath the ocean i mean at the base of the ocean so for the uh, for them for them a deep sea hydrothermal ecosystem that is providing the energy so apart from uh, apart from that the entire energy for required for the organisms is coming from sun right so the uh, the energy comes from the sun and basically the energy is unidirectional 
right so basically less than 50% of this uh, <coughs> i mean whatever the energy is coming from the sun so in that less than 50% is photo photosynthetically active radiation i mean less than 50% of this energy only can be used by plants for the purpose of photosynthesis so within this one uh, that uh, 50 approximately 50% of photosynthetically active radiation so mere 2 to 10% of pir is captured by the plant so so sustaining the entirety of living world so basically only 2 to 10% of the whatever available photosynthetically active energy that is utilized by the plants and uh, on that uh, fraction of energy supplied by the sun the entire organisms on the earth are surviving so with this you can understand the magnitude of the energy that is coming from the sun right as i explained so this is basically a unidirectional flow it is flowing only in one direction the energy is coming from the sun to earth but energy is not flowing to sun from the earth so this is the unidirectional nature of the energy right so energy flows in a unidirectional path from sun to producers and then to consumers so plants are primary producers and we we can say the animals they are the second the primary consumers right so this unidirectional flow aligns with the first law of thermodynamics emphasizing the uh, conservation of energy right now we will understand the second law of thermodynamics in ecosystem so ecosystem adhered to the second law of thermodynamics necessi necessitating a constant supply of energy to counteract the universal tendency towards increasing disorderliness so what is the natural uh, tendency of uh, the <coughs> earth so natural tender tendency of earth is to go towards disorderliness right so the constant supply from uh, supply of energy from sun energy from sun so this is preventing the uh, tendency of uh, earth that is disorderliness so because of because energy is being supplied from the sun the order is maintained on the earth so otherwise we could have extincted uh, till now so because of the supply because of the reason that the supply is being uh, energy supply is coming from sun we are surviving so once this energy flow stops we cease to exist right <coughs> so this is the some of the information about the uh, flow of energy so now we will try to understand the food chains and food uh, food webs so this is also very very important component uh, there is a question previously about the food chains and food webs in the end of this lecture we will see that aspect also we will see the question to so try to remember the aspects about the food chains and food webs so basically uh, in the previous slide we have understood that uh, there are producers and there are consumers so basically the producers are green plants green leafy plants they are the producers or the primary producers and uh, the consumers consumers are primary consumers those who are utilizing the energy produced here means they are uh, consuming the plants and they the consumers they are uh, consuming the plants and they are getting the energy for example if grass is the primary producer it is consumed by grasshopper grasshopper right so basically here the grass becomes the producer and the grasshopper it will become the uh, primary consumer so if uh, this grasshopper is consumed by frog so this becomes the secondary consumer so try to become uh, remember this example so we can say this is one example of the food chain right <coughs> so food chains basically uh, food chains and food web, web uh, food webs emerge in nature in starting uh, starting from the plants that is producer so this is uh, there is an intricate uh, this is an intricate uh, intri intricate system it depicts the interdependency among uh, organisms 
as one organism feeds on another forming a chain or web so basically whatever the example i have given grass it is eaten by grasshopper and it is eaten by frog so this is this is basically an example of food chain right so this is a food chain when food web comes so the uh, combination of food chains that forms the food web so basically grass is there so grass can be eaten by grasshopper and grass can be eaten by a goat let's say goat similarly goat is eaten by tiger and <coughs> grasshopper is eaten by frog right a snake frog can be eaten by a snake similarly snake can be eaten by eaten by an eagle so so if these kind of <coughs> examples are there so grass can also be eaten by a cow or a deer similarly deer can be eaten by tiger so when there is a complex of uh, food chains are there uh, that will be known as a food web so basically i am trying to give examples so that you can understand better so this is the example of food web where uh, the various food chains are involved when there is a one single dependency is depicted that is known as the food chain so try to remember this dif uh, difference so basically food chains and food webs they show the interdependency among organisms or as one organism depends on the other organism right so basically no trapped energy within the organism remains forever so energy keeps on transmitting from one organism to another right so this transfer of energy or of the organisms one organism dies or uh, demises that energy will be transferred into another organism right now we will understand the uh, tropic levels and the consumers so consumers i have explained so here the frog becomes a consumer secondary consumer the grasshopper becomes a primary consumer so consumers dependent on uh, dependent on plants either directly or indirectly classified based on their feeding habits so primary consumers such as herbivores herbivore herbivores means uh, who who are dependent on plants or who are consuming plants they feed directly on producers while secondary consumers the consumers are there they are carnivores basically the frog it is eating the uh, grasshopper which is another organism so because uh, here frog becomes a carnivore right similarly there are similarly there are omnivores <coughs> so basically omnivores are uh, the organisms both uh, i mean which consume both uh, which are both herbivores and carnivores which means they eat animal basically they eat plants also also they will eat animals right for example best example is human being human beings we eat both plants uh, and the products coming from the plants like vegetable and we also consume animals that is we consume chicken and we uh, consume like goat fish etc so we are basically <coughs> omnivores human beings are basically omnivores right so in certain food webs tertiary consumers may also exist in more complex ecosystem so the best example for uh, tertiary consumers are tiger we can say it it will come at the third or fourth levels in the uh, food chains or food webs so that type of tertiary consumers are also there basically the human beings the tigers lions so these kind of animals come in the tertiary they come as the tertiary consumers right <coughs> so this is uh, some of the examples about the food chain and food webs right now we will try to understand the energy flow within the aquatic and terrestrial ecosystem <coughs> right so in aquatic ecosystems basically uh, the grazing food chain it is primarily governs the uh, the energy flow in terrestrial ecosystems a larger uh, fraction of energy flows through the detritus 
put chain data address means we have understood till now the <coughs> uh dividing the complex organic matter matters into simple substances so that governs the uh, food chain on the terrestrial ecosystems right so basically we will understand the uh, now we will understand the tropic levels so tropic levels <coughs> organisms occupy specific tropic levels based on their feeding relationship so with producers at the first tropic level then there will be herbivores Uh, in our example, the grasshopper. That is at the uh, that is the second tropic level. So basically, grass is there. Grass are plants. So this is the first tropic level. Next is grasshopper. It is at the second tropic level. Next, it is eaten by frog. It is at the third tropic level. So we call this as tropic. one stage we will call as one tropic level so the important aspects about the tropics is the amount of energy decreases at successive tropic levels so that law is governed by the decrease in energy so basically let's say there is 100 units of energy is there when grass grass super consumes the grass here only 10 unit 10 units of energy is transmitted another 90 units of energy is uh, i mean it is involved in other process it goes as a waste similarly when it uh, uh, the frog eats the grass super only one unit of energy is transferred another nine units of energy is goes uh, goes in the process it goes as a wastage so basically the 10% law applies to all the tropic levels so at the each tropic level so each tropic level maintains a standing crop it represents the mass of living organic organisms at the particular time so basically this tropic level so it <coughs> it maintains a whatever the biomass that is there here we call it as standing crop so try to remember this terminology so whatever biomass is there at the this level it is known as standing crop so whatever biomass here there at the first uh, tropic level it is also known as standing crop so whatever biomass is there at one level that is known as the standing crop right next is 10% law just now i explained so whenever the biomass here is consumed by the next level so 10 per only 10% of energy is transferred to that next level again when energy or biomass is consumed from here to here from second level to third level here also only 10% of the available energy is transmitted another 90% of the energy goes as a waste in that process so this is 10% law so basically in ecosystems or in environment this 10% energy law is strictly followed so try to remember this aspect also So basically, another concept is there uh, when understanding the the tropic levels and the flow of energy. Ten percent rule uh, applies to that flow of energy. So the concept of ecological pyramids they help us understand the flow of energy and this uh, supply of energy, uh, transfer of energy from one level to another level. So basically, the ecological pyramids serve as representations of food energy, food or energy relations relationships between organisms. so right so <coughs> they show us the broad base i mean the uh, at the when we see the shape of the pyramid these represent the or show us the broad base at the broad at the base they uh, i mean the pyramid will be broad that represents uh, the producers at the first level because the producers are many and uh, <coughs> narrowing down at the apex and uh, that signifies that tertiary or top level so at the top level the consumers are very less those so the shape of a pyramid uh, that will explain all the things the number of consumers and the uh, level of energy only few numbers are there at the top level but at the base at the pro producer level they there are many number of organisms right similarly we can divide these pyramids so i'll show you the pyramid so pyramid is like this so at the base there are many number of organisms it shows that there are many number of producers producers at the top very small size which shows limited number of 
number of consumers right so basically uh, we can classify and study these pyramids in in three categories one one is pyramid of numbers so it represents the number of organisms at the at each level right so this is the pyramid of numbers so there are many number of organisms at the producers level when it comes to the tertiary consumer so there are only few few uh, consumers so we can see there are only at the producer level when we see the uh, pyramid so there are almost 58 lakh producers are there when it comes to tertiary level there are only three organisms so best examples of tertiary consumers are tiger a lion and a humans these are uh, these uh, examples these species will come at the top of the uh, food uh, food pyramids right next is pyramid of biomass so basically it illustrates the total biomass or organic matter at each trophic level so basically similar to pyramid of numbers it often exhibits an upright structure i mean as we pass to the other tropic levels the uh, i mean the source of the total units of energy will keep on decreasing but sometimes uh, there are exceptions like especially in ecosystems like sea where pyramid of biomass may be inverted due to the massive biomass of fishes compared to phytoplankton right so so pyramid of biomass can be like this upright structure where at the top of the at the base there are many producers but when it comes to uh, the apex level there are only few uh, consumers however it can be in inverted shape also so at the at the base there are only few producers example uh, only few species will be there when it comes to phytoplankton however uh, i mean depending on this phytoplankton plankton there are n number of fish species so because of this reason uh, the biomass pyramid of biomass can be inverted right next one is pyramid of energy we have seen pyramid of numbers now we have seen the pyramid of uh, biomass uh, the third one is pyramid of energy so it represents the amount of energy present at each tropic level in a given time or annually per unit area so it captures the unidirectional flow of energy within the ecosystem uh, remember that the flow of energy will always be upright because uh, we have studied just now the 10% rule when it comes to uh, transfer of energy only 10% of the existing energy will be transferred to the next tropic level so because of that reason the pyramid of energy will always be upright it cannot be uh, like this it cannot be a inverted pyramid see the both uh, the pyramid of numbers and the pyramid of biomass it can be either upright or inverted however the third pyramid pyramid of energy it will always be upright because 10% uh, principle applies here only 10% of the existing energy will be transferred to the next tropic level so this is pyramid of energy you can see at each level each level only 10% of the energy is being transferred right this is about the uh, flow of energy and the pyramid levels right now we will understand the nutrient uh, cycling in ecosystem right nutrient cycling is it involves movement of nutrient elements through various components of an ecosystem ensuring a continuous and a sustainable supply of essential animals for living organism so basically there is a uh, creation and a destruction of complex uh, uh, complex uh, we can say substances so nutri nutrient cycle plays an important role in creation and the destruction of this complex uh, substances so there are basically two types of nutrient cycles one is gaseous nutrient cycle examples include nitrogen and carbon cycles these are gaseous nutrient cycle right where the reservoir for nutrient exchange is atmosphere 
So the source for nutrient exchange here is atmosphere. Those uh, cycles are known as gaseous nutrient cycles. Similarly, there are sedimentary nutrient cycles. So examples include cycle of sulfur and phosphorus. So here the earth crust, earth's crust here, it will act as the reservoir for uh, the cycling of nutrients. So continuous availability of essential elements uh, for sustaining life within ecosystems. So the new nutrient cycle is very, very important for sustaining this availability of essential elements or nutrients for sustaining the life within the ecosystem, right? So the cycles, nutrient cycles will help us prevent the permanent loss of nutrients by continuously recycling the nutrients. So this is the important importance of the nutrient cycling cycles. So lastly, we will try and understand the services of the ecosystem. So ecosystem uh, provides us with various services, right? Those services are measurable and some of the services are norm, not measurable. So this is very, very important aspect because once in mains, means there were a, there was a question about the services that have been provided by the uh, ecosystem. So try to remember the examples of ecosystem services. So right, some of the services are air and water purification. You know all about this. So basically the air and water is purified by the ecosystem. So plants purify the air. Similarly, the water is purified through the flowing rivers, through the filtering of the groundwater, right? So through this, all these actions, the air and water is purified, right? Similarly, drought and flood mitigation. So through the processes of nature and environment, the drought and flood-like situations are mitigated, means they are controlled. Similarly, just now we have understood nutrient cycling so cycling so through this nutrient cycling only we are getting the essential components for survival of the uh, biomass on the surface of the earth similar as uh, next service is soil formation as we all know the soil is formed through the process of natural activities that are happening in the environment similarly wildlife habitat so creation of wildlife wildlife habitat is done through the ecosystem services only. So plants will grow, the rivers will form, the grasslands will form. So these act as the habitats for wildlife, wild animals. So these are some of the services that are being provided by the ecosystems. Right. So this, these are some of the aspects about the ecosystem or environment. So due to paucity of time, I could not cover more aspects. However, I try to incorporate as many concepts as possible within the one hour of lecture. I hope you have gained, gained some information through this lecture. We will see now some uh, previous questions, two previous questions that are asked in the examination. First question is, it is asked in 2015. The question is, which one of the following is the best description of the term ecosystem? See, based on the definition itself, there was a question in 2015. So because of this reason, I'm repeatedly, repeatedly asking you to remember the definitions of the words and uh, have some clarity on the con concepts when it comes to environment, right? We will see the options. Option A is a community of organisms interacting with one another, right? Second option is that part of the earth which is inhabited by living organisms. Third option is a community of organisms together with the environment in which they live. Fourth one is flora and fauna of a geographical area. So in all the three options, A, B and D, here the physical environment, physical factors, I mean the non-living aspect. Right? This is missing. So basically, uh, when we were defining the environment, we studied that the interaction of living and uh, non-living, biotic and abiotic uh, interaction between these two aspects is takes place in the environment. So basically the option C, it uh, properly defines the concept of ecosystem. So a, com a community of organisms, this is the biotic part, together uh, environment, uh, together with environment in which they live. 
So basically, there, there is an interaction between the biotic and abiotic factors that is known as the ecosystem. So in the rest of the options, the part of physical environment that is missing. So because of that, the three rest of the options become incorrect. Next question, uh, with reference to food chains in ecosystems, consider the following statement. So basically the question is about food chains. A food chain illustrates the order in which a chain of organisms feed upon each other. Second option is food chains are found within the, <coughs> within the populations of species, right? This is the second option. Third option is food chain illustrates the numbers of organisms uh, which are eaten by others. So if we see the three options, first option is correct. Food chain illustrates the order in which a chain of organisms feed upon each other. So this is correct. We have seen the example of grass, grasshopper and frog. So this, uh, it illustrates order in which chain of organisms feed upon each other. Second option is food chains are found within populations of a species. So basically this is incorrect. So <coughs> it is saying that food chains are seen within the species. So that is impossible because uh, if you take, take an example of species humans, a human cannot eat another human. So this is becomes incorrect. So basically food chains are seen among the species, one species depends on the other species. So that is there in the food chains. Next is food chain illustrates the numbers of each organism in which uh, they are eaten by others. So this is also incorrect. Basically, the numbers of eaten orga organism which are eaten by others, this is given in food webs. Right? We have also seen this example, food web. So, <coughs> so this is incorrect. This basic definition is about food web. So here the correct, correct option is option A. Uh, only statement one is correct. Right. So this is all for today. Uh, thank you. Thank you for joining the lecture. See you next time.